Good morning, church family. And happy Father's Day. Isn't it great to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Come on, I invite you to stand to your feet. And if it's your first time, we're just going to sing some songs this morning. Songs of adoration, songs of praise to our Heavenly Father. Amen. Come on. Hey. Verse 1, so you have come. From grayest skies, from grayest skies, the living color, you have called us in your life, you light on the world, the world to see you alone. You alone have made a way for us in your love. You are alive. I'm living in the light. Bridge for all, for all the world to find your love, for all the world to see that you are God, forever be lifted high. The one who holds the universe and every beating heart across. Shout it out this morning. You are life. I'm living in the light of my Savior. Dancing in the arms of forever. I'm singing like I'm walking on water. You are life. Sing, I give my life. I give my life to follow. Because your love is all. Give him praise this morning. He gives us light. Champion's not dead, he is 
For the God of miracles come, we need your supernatural love to break through. Nothing's impossible, you're the God of miracles. Come on, sing that chorus one more time. you in on a little secret so we got like two more songs but the second song is like a little chorus and a bridge and it's supposed to like sound good it's supposed to uh, make us feel better it's supposed to point us to God but worship doesn't have to sound good we don't have to sing good maybe on the worship team you do but in God's eyes he looks at the heart amen and he's a good good father should give you a hint of what we're going to sing next. But his love is also reckless. It's another hint of what we're going to sing next. 
But our worship shouldn't be based on how we feel, amen? Our worship should be based on what the Word says and what the Word says about us and what the Word says about our Heavenly Father. And 1 John chapter 3, it says this, See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God. And so we are. Aren't you glad that He calls us His children? Aren't you glad that He's a Father that loves us? That in John 3.16, as it says here, that He gave His Son, that He showed His great love that we would have everlasting life. And it continues on. Beloved, we are God's children now. And what we will be has not yet appeared, but when we know that when He appears, we shall be like Him because we shall see Him as He is. And that just means we're going to see Him that He's a righteous God, He's a loving God, He's a just God, and He's a God that loves us. And in verse 3 it ends, And everyone who thus hopes in Him purifies himself as He is pure. Isn't that good news? That on this Father's Day, yeah, we honor our fathers, but we ultimately honor the Father who loves us, who has a plan for us, who calls us His children. So this morning, can we honor our Father in heaven? The Father that gave His love on that cross so that we would have everlasting life. Amen. Let's pray this morning. Lord, we thank you. No matter what songs we sing, no matter how we feel this morning, we rest on the fact and the assurance and the confidence that we are your children. You call us your sons and daughters. Lord, that we have been adopted into your fold. So we thank you, Lord. We love you. We worship you this morning in spirit and in truth. Lord, because we have a Father that loves us. We worship you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. And we all say, and we all say, amen. Come on. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good. took a breath, you breathe your life in me. You have been so, so good to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down. Fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. been so good. You have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth. You paid it all for me. Come on, let's remind ourselves of our good God. You have been so, so good to me.
shadow. There's no shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up. You're coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down. Lie you won't tear down. Coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up. Coming after me. Shadow, you won't light up. Mountain, you won't climb up. You're coming after me. No wall, you won't kick down. Now you won't tear down. Coming after me. No shadow. No shadow, you won't light up. Mountain, you won't climb up. You're coming after me. Repeat that line. You have been. You have been so, so good to me. Even when I don't feel it, Lord, or believe it, it says in your word, you have. You have been so, so good to me.
God, not asking of anything, but we just want to give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise for only you and you alone deserve it. You are mighty. You are marvelous. You are magnificent. You are overwhelmingly faithful. You are our good, good Father. You are our provider. And we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day we get to wake up. We get to be in the house of the Lord and just worship you, Lord, and just give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. We thank you, Lord. We ask that your holy Spirit, just fill this room with your presence. And we ask that you prepare the hearts of these people, Lord Father God, to receive your word this morning. That they may leave this doors a new person, a changed man, a changed woman. In the mighty name of Jesus and all God's people say, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you. Too. Good morning. Before you take a seat, turn to somebody on your left and right and greet them. Good morning, church. Good morning, Pearl Sai Kapule. My name is Chris Tapuala, and this is my lovely wife, Vanessa. She'll be helping me out with welcome this morning. Um, if you are here for the first time, I just want to say ta'alofa and welcome to Pearl Sai. Um, our bathrooms is on my right, which is your left. And if you have young children from 2 to 10, we have children's church. If you want to take them, if not, that's okay. You can leave them here. Um, today we're going to do something a little different, but I just want to share our heart here at church um, for the new people. Our heart here at ProSight is for you to come to know God, follow God, discover your purpose, and make a difference by helping others do the same. Amen? Amen. 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 Yes. Happy Father's Day, everybody. <laughs> Happy Father's Day, and um, like I said, we're going to do something different. We're going to do our announcements in the beginning, and our tithes and offering. So for our announcements, um, Saturday, June 24th, we have a prayer of a discipleship making, making class. If you're interested, please see your small group leader to sign up. And if you're not part of the small group, please visit our welcome table in the back and those amazing people over there can help you get connected. Tithes, tithes and offering. Morning, everyone. I'm Vanessa. Um, so as we step into another act of worship, I just pray that you prepare your hearts for this. Um, and a reminder that this is just for, like, Pearlside family. So if you're a visitor, you're new here, please don't feel any obligation to give. Um, and you can give through the app, um, text, or also in the back, our ushers will have a, a secure bag in the back. Um, this morning, we are just going to read out of Malachi 3, 10. Um, Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that, they, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be enough room to store it. Let us pray. Father God, we just thank you for being the God of abundance and provision. Thank you for not only um, 
saying to bring the tenth into your house, Lord, but to also test you, Father. And so we pray that you pour out such a blessing that we cannot contain it, Lord. We thank you that we can stand firm on your word and have faith that you will open up the heavens and pour out a blessing that's too much for us to handle, Father. We thank you, Lord. We believe it. We have faith in it, Father. And we act upon our faith today, Lord. Bless the giver and may it further your kingdom. Amen. Um, next, I'd just like to introduce my very own father, um, Al Apodaca, who will be delivering the word today. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Vanessa. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, what a treat this morning. And for those of you that are here, welcome. For the first time, if it's your first time visiting us, we want to welcome you to our house. Our house is your house. Find a place in the family and get connected. And so today, we, have, we are starting a mini-series, which will begin today and end next week. So it's a two-week series. It's, uh, the name of the series is called Abundance. And how God wants us as his followers, as his believers, as his uh, students, disciples, as he wants us to live, and he spoke about us living an abundant life. And so it's our privilege and our honor to be able to um, do this series and to do, uh, I'm, I'm privileged and I'm honored to do this series. And today's message is uh, entitled Living a Life of Abundance. Now when I think of abundance, I think of an individual who was selected by God and we are honoring the fathers today. And so God is always looking for a man. He is always looking for a person. He started with Adam. Adam went his course and he went his way. But then the world became chaotic and corrupt. And eventually he had to choose another man. And he said, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is going way back. If you've never read the Bible, back into Genesis. God had created mankind to be in his likeness and his image. But yet... Man was corrupted because of the lies and deceitfulness of the enemy of Satan, the devil, who is alive and well and still deceiving and still corrupting and still causing chaos within individuals' lives. And even though this message is for the males in the house, the men of the house, it also includes all our females and all our ladies. God is looking for a lady too. He's looking for a woman. He's looking for someone that will stand up and live a life of purity, honor, and truth. They can trust in God. So God was looking for a man. He said, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to wipe out the entire population of the world. I don't really know how many people were in the world at that time, but he only saved eight. Noah built an ark. An ark had never been built. He put in his two sons, his two daughter-in-laws, and his wife, and they all went into the ark, and they survived. After they exited the ark... Mankind began to reproduce and multiply again. The world began to become corrupt again because that's just in our sinful nature. That's just human nature because humans are longing, they're looking, they're searching for purpose, for destiny, for a reason, for significance. Why we're here on earth? Why in the world am I here on the earth? I don't know if you've ever asked that question to yourself. But I've asked it to myself. Why am I here? Why do we go through the same routines? I don't know what happened to those plastic things, but they're gone. Man, those things helped out so much. And I, and, but I'm, I'm going to put my Bible to hold it down, okay? So, um, distracted out here, distracted. So, man began to go on his way again, and God chose out. They went from the line of Shem which is uh, Adam's third son. It was, it was uh, Abel, Cain, and then they had a third son named Shem. And that was where the righteous root or the genealogy of which Jesus came was birthed out of. Then out of that root of Shem, it's in Genesis chapter 11. So, but we're going to be looking at Genesis chapter 12 about hearing God. How, do, how does a person live a life of abundance? Well, first of all, God calls us out. He chooses us. 
We did not choose God. You may think, oh, I came to church and I, cho I chose God. No, God chose you. The Bible says in, in John chapter 15, you did not choose me. I chose you that, you would, that you would know me and that you would go and bear good fruit. Well, God chose and selected this man. It was a family. The father's name was Terah. And then he had a son named Abram and a son named Haran. And God called him in, in Genesis chapter 12. And he says, get up from your country. Leave your people, leave your family, and I will make you a great and mighty nation. And from that individual, from Abraham, obeying and hearing the voice of God, he lived a life of abundance. Look at me right here in the first point, to hear God. First of all, we got to hear God. It says in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, Now the Lord had said to Abraham, Abram, I mean, get out of your country from your family, from your father's house, to a land I will show you, and I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. Father, this morning, I sense that there's men that are stuck in Haran. They were called to come out of Haran and go into the land of promise, but they decided to stay settled in a place where they're not supposed to be. And they wonder why they're not living an abundant life because they haven't heard and obeyed the voice of God. So God, today I pray that you would open our ears, you would open our eyes, and you would give us obedient heart so that we would follow you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God is calling people out. He's calling people to follow him. This is not a religion. This is not a, something that we do on a concept. This is a relationship. God built Abram or Abraham in the later part when he became a father. He is the only person in the Bible where they mention that he is a friend of God. Man, what a title. What a title to have, to be known only known as the friend of God. Sure, Jesus, when he was with his disciples, when he gathered with them, he said, I no longer call you servants, but I call you my friends. Why? Because we are the children of faith. We are the children of Abraham. The Bible says, the Bible says in, in um, I got all my notes here. Hold on. The Bible says, in Romans, Romans chapter 4, verse 16, it says, Abraham, who is the father of us all. So not only is he a father of the faith of those that believe in God, he's a father of us all, those that believe and trust in God today. But what does it mean to live a life of abundance? Number one, we got to hear God. Not just hear him, but listen to him. Men, in our relationships with our spouses, right? Come on now. Uh, it's, it's a Father's Day service. I know, I know we're supposed to be nice to men. A lot of times, we hear our wives, or our spouses, but we don't listen to them. We got to keep asking them the same thing over. Didn't I tell you? Isn't that, didn't I, I just said that to you. And so... Some, somehow men have hearing problems, right? We all have hearing problems. <laughs> Abraham heard God. In verse 4, chapter 12, and it says, he went and he departed. He didn't hesitate. I believe there's some of you here this morning that are in this place, that you heard God. God told you a specific thing. He called you out. He, he selected you. He chose you to do a specific thing. And you heard it. You were supposed to leave the Ur of the Chaldees. And then you went into the land of Haran. And, and, and if you have a Bible map or if it's in your Bible, take, take a look at the journey that this family went through. I mean, it was a, it was a, arduous and torturous journey that this family had to move and they were they were pantheistic they were polytheistic which means they believed in many gods they trusted in many gods but god was calling them to be a monotheistic which was one god only one god only 
And Abraham had a heart to receive that message from God, and he went. It says that Abraham heard the voice of God, and he stood there a little while. No, that's not what he did. In verse 4, it says that he got up, and he departed with Lot and went into the land of Canaan. Some of us here have been stuck. You wonder, well, how, what, Al, how come I'm not living a life of abundance? I go to small group. I do this. I do that. I pay my tithes. I give offerings, this and that. But are you listening and obeying God? Or are you in a place where you're not supposed to be? Have you decided to stay where you don't belong? God says, come out from among them in 1 Corinthians or 2 Corinthians in verse chapter 6. It says, come out from among them and be separate or set apart. God wants us to be holy. He desires us to be set apart and not be blemished and not be uh, dirt, dirt, uh, uh, being uh, polluted by the things of the world. He wants his people to be a pure and holy consecrated, set apart for his use. Sure, we're going to be in the world. Jesus says, I'm not going to take you out of the world. You still got to go to work. <laughs> you still got to go to work. You still got to do the, the average things that normal, average, regular people got to do. But I want you to live a different life. I want you to live a sanctified life, a consecrated. Al, what are all those words? They're all words in the Bible. That's why we got to open up our Bible. We got to open up our ears and hear what God is saying. He's saying, get out of Haran. Leave your people, it says right there. Leave your country. Get out of where you were. I remember when God said, El, I want you and your family. Man, we're the head of the household. We're the ones leading our family. It, should, it shouldn't be our spouse. It shouldn't be the female leading the, leading the household. It should be the man. I remember when I told my wife, we're going to go to Hawaii. October 1989, when the Giants were playing the A's in the World Series and the big earthquake in San Jose and the freeways that collapsed. But we were getting ready in March. We were going to move to Hawaii on March 1st, 1990. We packed everything up. We burned the boat. We said, we're not going back. God is calling us. When he, as far as he takes us to Hawaii, wherever he wants us to take us from there, we'll go. And thankfully, they're still around. <laughs> I'm not, it's just, I'm just Al up here by himself. Thankfully, they stuck it out with me. I've done some crazy things. We moved when we first got married. We got married in 1983. It'll be 40 years in September. Where we moved, we had just barely been newlyweds. We had just bought a house. 17% interest in 1983 when the economy was so great. You think you're talking about 6% interest on your mortgage loan. We were paying 17% in our mortgage loan back in 1983. We had just bought a house, bought some cars. My wife had a Mustang Ghia with, a, with, 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 these, uh, with these nice top, with a top that would come off. And we were rolling, man. We were, I was 24, she was 21. That God called us to Sacramento. We're going to go to the capital. We're going to take the gates of hell. And we're going to take down the gates of hell. And we're going to, we're going to save souls and, and bring people to the kingdom. Because that's what I felt God was speaking to me. That's what I felt I heard God say. It says in Hebrews chapter 8, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go. And he went out not knowing where he was going. A lot of times... As we follow God, men, we don't know where we're going, but that's where we got to know God. We got to, we got to have an intimate relationship with the Lord. What does God want from me? What is he asking from me? Not about my wife, not about my kids. It's not about them. It's about me and you, God. What do you want from me? And I'm asking you this morning, men, what does God want from you? It's, stop, it's time to stop playing church. Hello. We can't play church. There's a warfare going on. There's people being broken and hurt and, 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 and running into problems and trials. And we are the answer. We are the salt. We got to take the salt. You know, the world has a different taste. But when the Bible describes us as salt of the earth, when we pour ourselves out into society, into the culture, we bring flavor to the world. 
We bring seasoning to the world. We bring preservation to the world. That's what we are called to do. We are to follow God. We are to leave our country, leave our family. Our family thought we were crazy. Everything was packed on one single pallet. We lived in one little room, all four of us, in one little room for a whole year with a, in a recovery home with drug addicts straight off the streets in Chinatown. But that's what God called us to do at such a time as that. And what is God calling me to do in such a time as this? Am I hearing God? Am I listening to God? Am I fellowshipping with him? Well, living a life of abundance because God promised Abram, he said, I will make you a blessing. And I will show you the land that I'm going to give you. But first, you got to get up and get out. Get out from where you're at. Stop staying where you, where you don't belong. Move out from that place and trust God. That's our next point. Trust God and sacrifice. So Abraham went to this journey, and, 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 and life is a journey. It, throughout the whole book of Genesis, life is a journey about this man that God called to raise up a nation. He had, he had, he had a son named Isaac, and then from Isaac became Jacob, and from Jacob became the 12 sons of, of, of Jacob, which is the 12 sons of Israel. And one of those sons was the son of Judah, and out of the son of Judah came Jesus. So it goes down the line. It's generational. What we do today and what we do today is going gonna, is gonna to affect, it's going to affect the next generation and the next generation after that. That's why we got to get it together today. That's why we got to step up. We got to pick up our big boy bibbities and, and, and say, okay, I'm ready to go. And ladies got to pick up your big panties, right? <laughs> big girl panties. And get up and go. Stop playing. We're, we got to get out of diapers. We got to get out of being nurse fed. We got we to start feeding ourselves and, and saying, God, what do you want me to do? He trusted God. And, but, and then he prayed, God, I, but I'm following you. You know, what, you know when God called him? He was 75 years old. He wasn't young. He was already mature. And God's calling some of you. You say, ah, that's for the young guys. Man, I remember I was 24. We were 25 when we went to Sacramento to the, to the, to the ghetto of Sacramento, to Oak Park of Sacramento. Didn't know a soul. Lived in a, in, in, in a, in a neighborhood of, um, the, the Chicano neighborhood was, was down south. We lived in a black and white neighborhood. And, and mostly in San Jose where we lived, where we grew up, was, 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 was all Chicanos, was all Mexicans, Latins, Latinos. And so it was different, but but that's where God called us. That's where he planted us. That's where he wanted us to root and, and begin to plant seeds and water and harvest the lost souls. Then when we came to Hawaii, it was, it was much different. We began learning, okay, God, where are the hurting people? Where are the lost souls? That we can make a difference, that we can pour out our salt. And so after, after when he was 75 years old, God promised him a child, but uh, the child never came. And then all of a sudden... He had to trust God once he had a child named Isaac. He had to trust God. And right there in Genesis chapter 22, Abraham said, and this is his son, ask, his son uh, Isaac had asked him a question. God, uh, you know, Dad, where, where, where's the sacrifice? We're going up to Mount Moriah. We're going up to the hill to sacrifice. But where's the lamb? Where is the sacrifice that we're going to offer to God? Abraham reassures him, says, my son, God will provide for himself the lamb for the burnt offering. And after he offered up his son as a sacrifice and God stopped him from killing him because Abraham had thought and he knew and he felt assured that God was going to raise his son from the dead even though he was about to kill him. And so he stopped him and here's God's words to Abraham. Now I know that you fear God, that you trust God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. You know, a lot of us have prayed for God to do things in our life. We pray, God, and we, 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 we travailed and we persevered and we cried out to God. And then God gives us what we prayed for. 
but then we're not willing to give up that Isaac. What is God asking you to give up today, men? What is the Isaac that he has provided for you? You have lived a life of abundance. I mean, Abraham was rich. He was rolling, man, in those days. He was a very wealthy and prosperous man. Wherever he went, he was a blessing because the Bible describes that God said that he will make a great nation out of him and that he will be a blessing. He will live a life of abundance, and that's what he was doing. But then that point comes in our life. God says, are you willing to offer it all up for, for me? Are you willing to give up the thing that is so precious and so valuable to you? Your reputation, your career, whatever it is that God is knocking on the door of your heart to give up and say, hey, just lend it to me. I'm going to give it back to you, but yet we're afraid because we're afraid of losing it. Abraham wasn't afraid of losing it. He was willing. Living a life of abundance means trusting God and sacrificing. We don't like that word. I don't like that word. What do I got to, you mean we got to fast today? We got to sacrifice eating? Oh, I love eating. I, mean, I always talk about food. See, I'm gonna, we're going to have food for you after. You're going to have some manapuas from um, Chunwa Cam. <laughs> You know, the bread is so soft and moist, and the hot dogs are so delicious and tender. So men and women and children, go ahead and eat as much as you like before you leave, okay? I know you have your other dinners and lunches that you have, but we hate sacrifice. But God says living a life of abundance is a life of trust and sacrifice. He says, now I know. Does God know that we are willing to give up what's most valuable to us? Can God trust us? What is God asking you today to give up? And lastly, we want to honor God. Being a father is about hearing God, obeying God, trusting God, and honoring God. That's what a godly father, a father that I'm learning to be even after all these years a father that i'm on my journey it was a process it doesn't happen immediately it doesn't happen instantly abraham had to go from the ur of the chaldees when you go to that bible map if you ever do look it up he went from the ur of chaldees and then they landed in a town called haran because he lost his son haran there so they named the town haran and they stood there for how many years until terah died which was his father he was honoring his father but then god visited him showed up one day and spoke to him said get up get out of your country get away from your family they're only going to influence you in the wrong way and go to a place I'm calling you to live a life of abundance. Would you be willing to do that? There was a fight. There was a, there was a battle that Abraham fought. It talks about it in, um, it talks about it in Genesis 14, 14. It says that he armed 318 trained servants who were born in his own house. Abraham had a special forces unit who went and they battled against these kings and, and they won the battle. But then he, he was met with, he was met by Melchizedek, the high priest. And it says everything that he gained in the victory, it says that he put a tithe and he gave a tenth, 10% 10 of everything to Melchizedek. Because why? He wanted to honor God. He realized that God was the source of his victory. Men, don't hold on to what is God's. Don't take what belongs to God. Let's honor God by giving him our life. Father, this morning, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the life of Abraham, who the Bible describes as our father, the father of our faith who went and believed and went without knowing where he was going, but yet he found a place, he found a, he found a resting place in the land of Canaan. And I pray for all our fathers this morning, Lord, as they hear this morning, that God, you're doing something special. 
in their lives, in my life. You're doing something special. You're not finished with us yet. We're in process. We're on this journey. We're on the way, Lord God. Help us not to get stuck where we don't belong. And help us to move on and move from the place that we've settled in. And let us move where your presence wants us to go. We ask this in Jesus' name. Listen to this song as we conclude our message this morning. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Um, it's Father's Day. Yeah, it's awesome. You know, I, I, it's my favorite day um, because I just think it's great. Like, being a dad is great. I've, I've had amazing blessings. If people don't know, Al, Al is my father-in-law. Sometimes we don't know who's connected to who. That's my father-in-law. Um, so I'm lucky to have him, and um, I'm lucky to have the, the father that I have uh, who couldn't make it today. He went to go watch Cats with my other um, siblings so you know what kind of dad is that if he's showing up to cats uh, but I, I wanted to share you know like before we start the song is is I realized too that um, you know we we're putting together this slideshow of all the dads here and, and that's why I love being at this church is I get to do life with amazing men um, and our family gets to do life with amazing families uh, but I was also thinking like not everybody has that same view of Father's Day that I do I'm lucky both my dads are still here. I had an amazing father growing up. Not everybody has that. Um, and so this song, you know, like, it talks about, I think some of us going back to what, what Al was sharing is sometimes um, I feel like we see ourselves through our own eyes. Uh, we see ourselves through our failings. We see ourselves through the things that we maybe came up short on as fathers. Um, and this song calls for you to see yourself the way God sees you. And that's different. That's a different view. It's the way I view my own kids. I always tell them, like, there's nothing you can do that will ever make me stop loving you. Even if I don't like what you're doing, I don't like that. But I will always love you. And there's nothing you can do that will change that. And that's the way God sees us. And so if we can get through that, no matter what our earthly fathers were like, whatever that was for you, there's one tie and that tie is God. We all have a heavenly father that loves us unconditionally. And so that's what this song speaks of. Um, and it's important. We don't do performances. We do worship. Um, I was a little nervous. I was like, oh, this is special. Like, perform. No, this is worship. Um, and thank you, Francis, for sharing that. So I would love for you guys to join us in worship, to stand with us, um, and just give our heavenly father the thanks. <coughs> Songs captivate your heart, but more than offerings. Who you seek the depths of me when you see me, you see my heart through the eyes of your mercy in the light of your sun. pride of a father and I was once a prodigal burdened by my shame till you came running to remind me your love is unconditional and in your eyes I'm worthy of forgiveness was lost is now redeemed when you see me you see my heart through the eyes of your mercy in the light of your son and you love me with open arms and the pride of
know you love me. I know you love me. Oh, you never leave me. You never leave me by my side. By my side. Who am I that you love me? Who am I that you saved my soul? Who am I without you, Lord? Who am I to be worthy? Who am I that you're mindful of me? Who am I that you call? Let's go, church. Who am I that you love me? Who am I that you save my soul? Who am I without you, Lord? And who am I to be worthy? Who am I that you're mindful of me? Who am I that you call? Who am I that you love me? Who am I that you save my soul? Who am I without you, Lord? And who am I to be worthy? Who am I that you're mindful of me? Who am I that you call me Could everyone sit down except for the fathers, please? This is our response this morning. Everyone else can go ahead and get seated. Just to be clear, I, I wasn't here to scold anybody. I was thinking about it. It sounded like a scolding. It's not a scolding. It's, it's an uplifting that we have to raise our level as men, as males. We have to, like, go to the next step to increase our fatherhood our followerhood of who God has called us to be. He wants us, he's looking for men to raise up, to be that one for purpose, destiny, and calling. And, and uh, just close your eyes right there where you're at. And those around, around the, the, the fathers, can you just lay your hands on them? I, I saw a waterfall. And, and God was pouring out Holy Spirit. And it's so refreshing, so invigorating, so renewing. Father, I pray this morning that a waterfall of your presence would come over each of those fathers that are represented here. I pray that you would open the doors for those that desire and truly want to be fathers, Lord God, and they're still waiting, Lord, to become fathers, that you have your hand on them too, just as Abraham waited 25 years, yet you never forsook him. You didn't forsake 
your promise in his life. And so, God, today I pray for an overflow presence of your power to come over the fathers in the house, that they would honor you, that they would obey you, that they would trust you, and they would love you with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength, which is the greatest commandment, and to love others as they love themselves. I know we messed up, God, so many times, yet today we stand and we recognize the way you see us. You see us as men of God, serving you, set apart for your glory. Fill them this morning, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can you remain standing? They have a gift for you. They want to give you some extra salt, some extra seasoning. No tomahawk steaks today. Maybe next year, go get tomahawk. I told them that's to be our gift. That should be our gift, a tomahawk steak frozen. So we go home, we're going to be defrosted by the time we get home. But uh, we have some extra salt so that you can be poured out amongst your family this morning. You can go ahead after you get your, after you get your salt so that they can recognize who you are. Amen. Don't forget to sign up for the prayer class. It's, a, it's, a, it's just about learning how to pray, get closer to God, learn a model, learn a pattern. And so if you're interested, um, there's a next step card. If you, don't, if you don't belong to a group, but if, there's some next step cards in the back. It says, I prayed the prayer to receive Christ. I dedicated my life to Christ. I'm new to Pearlside, and I want to join a small group, or I want to attend one of the classes. It's over there on the welcome table. Go ahead and pick one up. We want to thank you for being here once again. Father, we want to bless every person that as they go to their separate ways, wherever they go, Lord, that your presence will go with them. Go before them, go with them, go around them, and let this be a time of joy and celebration. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a terrific day. Pick up your Manapua hot dog. <laughs>